Look at this amazing cabinet that my parents found for me on a curb in my hometown. It's wonderful. I drove it all the way from Iowa to New York and I've finally taken the time to refinish it. So at one point the cabinet had been painted black. It definitely needed a lot of sanding to reveal the beautiful oak underneath. It has a little bit of water damage and it's not structurally perfect, but I just focused on mainly the cosmetics for this um, project so that I could make it into a functioning cabinet to hold all my little bits and baubles. So the paint really got into the grain, but I kind of liked how it looked, so I didn't go overboard on the sanding process. I tried to get an estimated date on this piece. It's, it seems that it's a flat file cabinet, and I found some similar ones from the late 1800s or the early 1900s, and some of them had possible ties to the railroad, which is interesting. I did notice a small painted logo in the middle of sanding, but unfortunately, once I sanded the paint off, the, this logo had mostly disappeared as well. I don't often do these kind of furniture rehab projects, mostly because I get too connected to the pieces and I just really don't have enough space to keep collecting antique furniture in my home. Um, I find it really therapeutic to just take things apart and breathe new life into a piece that has a lot of age and like this piece, an unknown history. So projects like this really demonstrates the beauty and timelessness of a quality piece of wood furniture. So here I am removing all of the hardware, which had unfortunately been painted as well. This was a bit of a process and there were a lot of tiny nails. And as you can see, I'm kind of really abusing my woodworking chisels in these processes. Um, so most of the drawers were in pretty good condition, but there were a few that needed the bottoms replaced. So I had to take them apart and I really felt sad doing this because the drawer bottoms were actually solid wood. It was very thin, but it was solid wood. Um, so it really felt like a shame to have to replace the, these bottoms with some cheap plywood from Home Depot, but that's what I did. So I'm gonna use this chest for little random woodworking bits. I want it to be functional, but I'm not overly obsessing with the details. Um, when I bring something like this home, I never have the intention to flip it or sell it. And this kind of is just, it's just a fun hobby for me. Once wood, woodworking became my job, then little things like this are something that I've, I've just kind of maintained as a hobby for myself. And, and this chest is something that I'll probably have for the rest of my life. All right, so now I am sanding the drawers. This was another big job. The drawers were really, really dirty and they were smelly as well, but um, I was able to get them sanded down pretty well. And it, it took a lot of elbow grease to get the paint off of the drawer fronts. So I did as much as I could with the orbital sander and then I had to go back in and hand sand the remaining little nooks and crannies to get all of the, the rest of it cleaned up. So I used my pin nailer to attach the new bottoms and I didn't use any glue for for the for the bottoms. But as I was doing it, I was feeling like this could be a mistake using the pin nailers and it did end up being a mistake because the bottoms eventually fell off once I kind of worked with them a little bit. So I did go back later and put in actual nails with heads to hold these bottoms in place. So the comparison of the old drawer versus the new drawer is pretty amazing. Next, I vacuumed out all of the drawers to get rid of any remaining dirt and dust. Now 
for the extremely labor intensive part of the process. This was removing the paint from the handles. So I looked online and I found that simmering them in water and baking soda would help to soften the paint so that it could easily be wiped off. So I used a really cheap pan, one that I'm not gonna be using for cooking and it worked really well. Um, so I'm putting in just simmering water with baking soda and all of the handles. So once the handles were done simmering, it was really easy just to wipe away the remaining paint residue. This process worked pretty well, but the subsequent stages are definitely, were definitely a little bit more grueling. So after the hardware had dried, it had this white cast, which I initially thought they had tarnished or had some weird reaction, but then I realized I just needed to rinse off the baking soda. So that white was just baking soda residue. So now for the polishing. This step was honestly really miserable. I used some inexpensive polish from Amazon. This hardware had so much buildup on it that it really took a lot of wiping to remove all of those years of age on this hardware. So I started off using a really tiny amount of polish and I, was, I thought that would be enough. But then in the end, I actually ended up using the entire tube to clean all of these handles. So... Again, it had so much grime and stuff on the handles. So I ended up actually covering them very liberally with the polish and kind of letting it soak for a brief moment. And then I just took an old washcloth to buff, buff them off after I had finished the polishing process. So you can really see the difference in this side-by-side -side comparison with the polished handles on the left and the unpolished handles on the right. Finally, the handles are complete. I didn't even mess with the nails, I just bought new brass nails. So now back to the cabinet. I was undecided on finish, but I ended up going with a darker stain. So I started off with a coat of Minwax black stain to complement the kind of leftover black paint that was stuck in the grain of the wood. Um, and then I immediately wiped off the excess black paint and added, or sorry, black stain and added a coat of Minwax fruitwood stain on top of that. So that lightened it up quite a bit and it ended up overall being kind of like a deeper brown tone. After my stain had properly dried, I then added a coat of Minwax Polycrylic in Satin and the finish turned out very nice. All right, so adding the hardware back on was kind of a nightmare. Why is it so hard to use a hammer and nails, especially these tiny nails? I kind of lost my patience with this step. So there are a few imperfections, but I finally got all of the hardware back on. Um, initially, I thought I was missing some hardware for the bottom drawers, so I ordered some similar handles on Amazon. I later realized I actually had enough hardware for all of the drawers, but I, you know, when I once I found the hardware, I had already done all the polishing and stuff, and I just really didn't want to go through that process again. So here's the final product. It turned out really nice. I've started adding little labels as I fill up the drawers and it's so nice to, to hide away all these little pieces of finishing hardware that I use for my woodworking.